Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm currently wearing the wrong hat for this one. Let me get the right hat for this one. Gentlemen, as always, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, and today we are taking a look at what happens when a southerner, or at least someone who's very proficient in, of course, history and the Civil War, is immediately transported to the shield hero world as the bow hero. I don't like where this is going. We follow... And, and I, before everyone starts yelling off in the comments section, because I know many of you will, do know now that this story is... A civil war story in a weird way. It is a story that is building up to a civil war. And at the current chapters it's at, I'm honestly going to have fun with it. I really am. So, we follow William Dixie. Excuse me, what? William Dixie, of course, is someone who is currently a sort of history buff. Is is kind of trying to be built up as this sort of leader. Being basically... You can read it all in, in his introductory chapter, we don't care about that. What we do know, what we want, what was so important is his knowledge and the weapon he has. The weapon he has is a old uh, Civil War musket. And again, a lot of cool things can be done with this idea already. And I, I, again, some ideas are presented in this that I absolutely do love and makes me love this story even more. But there are some cardinal sins that once again are followed for a Shield Hero fanfiction. We'll get to that when we get to it. But, William Dixie, of course, is transported to the Shield Hero world as the bow hero, and all that introductory shit is done out of the fucking way. We don't give a shit. And he basically finds out that his weapon can imitate other weapons because the bow technically was the innovator for firearms. Basically, without the bow, we wouldn't have firearms. And while that argument can be done to death, and has been argued to death, I'm not going to add to it. I'm just going to say that is what's in the story. I will let you people, you armchair historians, you armchair firearms historians, argue in the comments section about whether or not the bow led to the development of firearms or not. Of course! Now, the cool thing about this story is that it presents an idea that not a lot of people have explored. The idea that the holy cardinal weapons can actually take other forms. In this case, it's the form of the musket that William had. And again, what I like about it is that because it doesn't use traditional ammunition, it uses mana to basically shoot. Uh, you know, yeah, basically mana weapons. Moving on. That's kind of a cool concept and idea that I honestly do like. That doesn't mean that it cannot still use regular gunpowder and bullets, it's just that it uses mana uh, instead. Again, cool concept, cool idea, and I really do like it. Now, moving on, William then begins forming his party that he gets, of course, we get that party scene, blah, 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 blah. He begins forming them into military ranks. He begins forming them into a sort of small military unit and begins introducing them into this sort of Civil War style or Napoleonic style tactics and even some more modern tactics that can be used. And it works out pretty damn good. Of course, William, being who he is and sort of understands history and the fact that slavery is a sin and should not be allowed is planning to start a civil fucking war in Merrillmark. That number one is something I can get behind. It's something that not a lot of other people are actually doing with Shield Hill stories. Or if they are, I haven't found them yet. And something I did personally in my own Shield Hero fanfiction was create your own nation, create your own military to take on or at least counter the Merrillmark government. 
Another story has done this idea besides mine and Williams, uh, besides mine and of course this story as well. But again, we're going to look at it uh, a little bit further and deeper and the speculation and how things can go forward down the line. Now, William, of course, does un understand the trial is kind of, mm, and, you know, doesn't trust the king as far as he can fucking throw him. Now, builds up, now he begins working with traders and other merchants and starts building up his own military, starts building up his own militia, starts building up his own Minutemen, essentially, outfitting him with uniforms and weapons and everything in, the, in his power and ability to basically do. And I love it. I really do. This shows that William actually is taking a proactive approach and starts laying plans to start a war in Merrillmark or at least a type of military coup. Now, once the first wave does come, this is where things get... This is where things go to hell in a handbasket because Will starts helping out the village instead of going to attack the fucking boss. He begins handling the situation alongside the shield hero, and while he believes the shield hero is bad and thinks that he's going to loot, that perception is changed, I believe, which this perception will change, and this is actually kind of cool, because while, yes, Will does understand that, you know, Raph Talia is a slave, and he understands that Nafumi got her as a slave, there is a lot of things that aren't adding up, and there are a lot of things that definitely are not adding up. So I can see him giving Nafumi a chance to explain himself and basically, you know, why do you have a slave? And hear Rob Talia's side of the story. But once the wave is done and the Knight Commander basically fired on the bow hero's forces, most other stories basically say, oh, the Knight Commander gets away and lives. Not here, motherfucker. What happens is that William does what I brought up in my review of the noble of the rise of the noble knight. He takes out the knight commander as well as a few others, lining them up against a pit, and then kills them, setting up for what is to come, creating a domino effect. Because here's how I see things going forward, or at least here's how the author can take things going forward. I don't know if I'm going to hit close to the mark on the home, but if the author joins in the Discord server, hopefully they can we can talk and actually kind of exchange some ideas. The whole reason that Will is building up this military is to bring down Melomark, bring down the slaver's nation, essentially, and sort of, my guess, put in a democracy or a type of republic, sort of more or less what we did against the British. At which point in time, the way he can do this is have his forces in the party and begin to set up to pull the coup. And once the king, or at least the spear hero, tries to start shit with the shield hero, William then can get involved. William then can jump at this opportunity. Because right there, all the nobles are there. All the ruling heads are there. The king is there. The princess is there. The knights are there. Head of states, military officials are there. He can basically pull the coup then and there. At which point in time, can kill the king and the princess. And immediately announce that the Merrillmark kingdom is now under his control and changes are going to be put in place. And if they are not part of the solution, they're part of the problem, if they're part of the problem, there's the wall, here's the firing squad, you make your decision. And going forward, I can see him actually being at odds with the other heroes. I can see him being at odds with the hero's church, which will immediately begin a civil fucking war. And once that happens, all bets are off, and William can begin making weapons, essentially, because making muskets is not a hard thing to do. But if I had to give you an idea of weapons that would actually work out pretty well in terms of rate of fire and actually creating uh, some good stuff, talk to the industrial nation that the Queen is in at the moment. Uh, they have what looks like uh, Martini Henrys, at least. So you can give them ideas for, like, a LaBelle rifle, which was, which is a tubular, magazine-fed, bolt-action, uh, black powder rifle, or even Lee Metfords, or even Lee Enfields. Again, there's a lot of cool stuff that can be done with this story, and I really am hoping, and I really am happy to see where this goes going forward, because, again, this is a Shield Hero story that if the author does it right and doesn't fall into the same trap of following the story beats way too damn closely and not change anything at all, can be good. And it is a good story. And I'm looking forward to where William Dixie 
takes his plans going forward. But, till then, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Airsoft Al, and if you want to check out this story for yourself, link in the pinned comment down below, as well as the Discord server link that I'm in, as well as other authors. And if you want to help support the channel and sponsor future reviews, or even future story reviews or media reviews, link down there as well. And let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this story, and whether or not it's good. And, you know, being a proud southern boy myself, I approve of the story. But, till then, ladies and gentlemen, October's around the corner, and, well, might as well get a head start on it with the next story being a zombie story. As to what zombie story, that's gonna be a surprise. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen.